when I first discovered the dusty antique doll shop on a quiet side street near my new condo, it felt like fate. I'd always loved collecting dolls, and this place was filled with treasures. The kindly owner, Mrs. Rothstein, took interest in me immediately. Back room is where I keep the extra special ones, dear, she whispered with a wink. Passing the beaded curtain to the rear of the shop, I sucked in an excited breath. Displayed prominently sat an exquisite porcelain doll in a frilly blue Victorian dress. Her delicate hand rested lightly on an ornate throne chair. Lifelike blonde ringlets framed her peaceful face with rose-painted cheeks and soft gray eyes. She was perfect. When I commented to Mrs. Rothstein about the doll's beauty, the woman stiffened. Annabelle? No, trust me, she's not for you. A darkness passed over the woman's face. Baffled by her reaction, I couldn't get the exquisite Annabelle out of my mind over the next few days. I kept returning to the shop just to visit her in the back room. She seemed to gaze back begging me to bring her home. I finally approached Mrs. Rothstein and insisted Annabelle was meant for me, whatever her misgivings were. Perhaps she had grown too attached to the doll over time. With a grave expression, she agreed to the adoption like a child. But her words sent a chill through me. Guard her well. And heed the signs. That first night, having Annabelle in my home felt oddly peaceful. I tucked her snugly into a decorative glass case in my bedroom with her little doll-sized trunk of outfits. Watching her rest there, I was overcome with nurturing love for my new daughter. The next morning, I was startled to find Annabelle facing the opposite way in her case, staring as if she had turned in the night to observe me sleeping. Just my imagination, I told myself while turning her back around. I went to work excited to come home again to Annabelle. But that night, my anxiety spiked entering my bedroom. Annabelle was standing upright behind the glass now, her gray eyes fixed on me. Definitely hadn't left her that way. Again, I dismissed it as forgetfulness. But an unease crept into my interactions with Annabelle. Her gaze started following me around the room, becoming more unnerving each day. One night I awoke breathless from a nightmare of her crawling across my bed, cold porcelain fingers grasping at my face. One weekend while cleaning, I lifted Annabelle's trunk and paused, a strange rattling came from inside. Setting it down, I carefully opened the clasp. A frightened gasp escaped me and I instinctively flung the lid shut again. Nestled in the satin lining were aged children's teeth and tiny finger bones yellowed with time. Why had I not realized those were never props, but actual grisly trophies? Horror hollowed me as I stared at Annabelle's placid expression. What had Mrs. Rothstein unwittingly released into my home? That night, I wrapped Annabelle in an old quilt and placed her in my storage ottoman, away from sight. But sleep did not come easy. I awoke some hours later to the nearby sound of scraping. Heart pounding, I cracked the lid with my phone's flashlight. Annabelle's glowering porcelain face lunged at the light. I recoiled with a scream and slammed the ottoman shut. Scrabbling noises ensued as my panic overwhelmed me. At dawn, I returned hesitantly, afraid of what I'd find. But when I eased open the lid this time, Annabelle lay wrapped and motionless in the quilt exactly as I'd left her. Had it been another nightmare? I was questioning my very sanity now. While out running errands, my phone buzzed incessantly with motion alerts from inside the condo. I pulled up the security cameras with mounting dread. 
In the grainy footage, doors slowly opened and closed on their own throughout the condo. As I watched, boiling terror rising in me, Annabelle's trunk lid flipped up briefly. Rushing home, I retrieved Annabelle from the ottoman and shoved her in the farthest corner of my hall closet, covering the doll with coats. Just holding her repulsed me now as an unholy energy seemed to radiate from the china. That night brought no rest. An hour after laying down exhausted, I heard faint scratches coming from inside the wall over my headboard. Like something trapped was clawing steadily for escape. My body went rigid at the sound. After debating a minute, I leapt up flipping on all the lights. Grabbing a hammer from the kitchen, I began smashing into the drywall inches above my pillow, heedless of the damage. Plaster crumbled away revealing the face peering out from inside the wall, Annabelle's. I released a wretched scream of anguish and disbelief. The doll's head swiveled with staccato clicks toward me as a thin monotone voice escaped her painted lips. Let me in, mother. Nearly collapsing from my sobs, I sealed Annabelle back in her trunk and called Mrs. Rothstein, demanding she take the doll back tonight. Wordlessly the old woman appeared on my doorstep to retrieve her ward. Ancient sadness filled her eyes as I placed Annabelle in her hands. You tried, dear. Not your fault. But she cannot be contained. Mrs. Rothstein had clearly grappled for who knows how long with the entity inhabiting this doll. Now it was unleashed again through my actions. As she turned to leave, I had one last question. What exactly, I.S. Annabelle? The woman froze, staring off down the shadowy hall for several silent moments before replying softly. Something that has existed before, and now again through invitation. All you saw was only a glimpse. With that, she departed into the night. Somehow her cryptic words provided the only solace I found. This living evil was far older and more powerful than little Annabelle's porcelain shell implied. Perhaps in that lies the only saving grace, most of its abilities were fettered in such a physical cage, limiting the havoc it could wreak. But having sensed its insidious energy, I now fear for anyone else who opens their home and heart to adopt Annabelle's deceivingly innocent gaze. Mrs. Rothstein passed not long after our encounter, leaving the doll and shop's ownership unclear. The place shuttered, with before Annabelle vanishing into the world again seeking her next mother. So be warned, antiques often carry unseen remnants of their pasts. An admiring glance alone invites darker histories to latch onto our souls and certain possessions crave new vessels for their lasting legacies. Guard well your spirit against Annabelle's beckoning eyes found peering from the shadows. For innocence left untouched by evil awaits only those who turn away its foothold, not into the heart's hearth but back toward the darkness spawned. Our humanity hangs precariously over the hungry abyss. But each wise choice turns us from the plunge, as morning banishes the terrors only night could birth and nourish. Let that hope guide your steps gently away. Some haunted heirlooms weep for cleansing fire.